Hello everyone and welcome to the heat races for the Fields 100 here for the Dr. Pepper Dash Series season opener at Homestead. We have 46 entrants into this year's Fields 100, 35 in the field will make the race, meaning 11 drivers will go home. The heats format is this, 10 laps per heat for a total of 50 laps for the five heats. There is a 20 lap LCQ afterwards, the top six from each heat advance into the show, the bottom four or three, depending on how many are in the heat, will go to the LCQ where the top five from that will advance to the show. 10 drivers in this, we're ready to go racing here, so let's go ahead down track side for the commands to fire the engines for heat number one of the field's 100. Drivers, start your engines! With that, the engines are fired. We're ready to roll for 10 laps here in heat number one. Kyle Bichelia in the Raceway 7 car for Maverick Motorsports starts on pole. Alongside him is the 85 of Oliver Kingley for Columbus Autosport this year. Row two sits Zachary Bilson in his return to the NSDCA after a long hiatus. He drives the number seven for Sladek Motorsports Group. Alongside him is Austin Johnson, two-time winner of the Fields 100, the only driver to win the Fields 100 so far. In th row three is Chris Louvier and Matthew Eves. Row number four, Ikna Commit and uh, Jeff Bolton. And row number five, Kyle Vodders and Robert O'Reilly. Six drivers advance into the heat or into the main from this. The bottom four will go to the LCQ after 10 laps. We're going to have some racing. Green flags in the air. We're racing in heat number one at Homestead. Kingley gets the push of his life from Johnson into turn number one, and it could get him the race lead in that 85, but he's going to drift up the track. Now Johnson might throw it three wide there as they come out of turn number two. Three wide for the top spot immediately as Bichelli on the inside just has nowhere to go as Austin Johnson trying to win his heat and possibly the race if he can win this one. Of course, heat number one sets the pole position. If Austin Johnson gets the pole, it's going to be a runaway, I think. As now Zachary Bilson slides up the track, he's going to be forced three wide, and he's going to drop out of that top six position as he goes right there in that number seven shout out to toyota for this year they have joined the uh um the dpds they now have a model in the dpds you see a very old camry of course those were not around uh in the in the years that these cars actually drove in races so they made a brand new car the dpds this year Right now, Jeff Bolton sitting in sixth. Austin Johnson all over the back of Pichelli for the race lead. We'll see if he can get on by as he pushes him down the back straightaway. Bumper right to uh, his rear bumper as he pushes him through the corner a bit. That might have bumped the hood up a little bit with how uh, big of an impact he gave to the back of that 66. Not going to worry, though, as we are now two laps through this heat already. And we already have some great battling going on. Bichelia has Johnson all over the back of him. Eves moving his way up into third. Matthew Eves was in the Molson Modified Series, moved his team owner, Logan Cloud, out of the way and dumped Logan Cloud into the outside wall. That's how he got in through to the Troyer 75 that was ran yesterday. Austin Johnson in the 51 now on the inside of Kyle Bichelia side by side for that race lead. Again, the finishing position, if you finish this race in first, you start on the pole for the Fields 100. And Austin Johnson, two-time winner of the Fields 100 now to the inside of Kyle Bichelia. This is the same car he drove two years ago to the race win here and last year to the race win here. He, he doesn't crash the car, so why even have to make a new one? And this car is showing he has the pace and the speed and a setup to fight with the big dogs here in the DPDS. Oliver Kingley now back there in that fourth position trying to hang on over Chris Louvier. The commit in sixth as Jeff Bolton fights to make his way into the show in seventh. Vodders, O'Reilly, and Bilson look like they're just three uh, doing a three-car tandem at the very back of this. As they're all single file coming off the corner. Long way down this back straightaway. These cars are actually just a little bit slower than the Molson Modified only, but they have more grip in the corners to be able to um, handle. Plus, these are not open wheel cars. You got all the sheet metal around them. They can bump and bang, and you'll see a lot of contact here for positions for especially the transfer spot. But even the race win right now is Johnson is still just all over the back. Kyle Bichelia down this front straightaway. Now Eve's looking to the inside of Johnson. That's going to be for that second spot, but Johnson's going to go for the race lead if he can make it work on the outside. Just going to slip up over the groove a little bit. I think that's going to cost him some time there as they come off of the corner. Top seven under a blanket, but one of those guys will have to go to the LCQ, though they would start on pole for the 20-lap event there in the B main, the LCQ for the Fields 100. 
And now Bolton looking for sixth on commit. That is for the transfer spot to get into the show as Kingley is all over the back of Eves there for that third position. Now Louvier goes up the track. Bolton's going to slide up. That's going to give commit the inside line. And the crossover right there will put commit back in to the show as they run right now in the Trevor Project number 18 as he dives now to the inside of Chris Louvier. That's for that fifth spot. Again, in the Molson Modifieds, it was the top five only that made it through in the heats. This, it is the top six. This is going to be the biggest Fields 100 field ever. We have 35 entries in the field this year because the DPDS has gone to 30 full-time uh, entries per race instead of the 25. They want to make a bit of a difference there uh, between the Molson Modifieds and the DPDS. Now here comes Bolton right back. Louvier on the outside. Bolton's trying to race his way in. The other three, O'Reilly, Bilson, and especially Vodders, have all dropped off the back. I don't think those three are going to be able to fight their way back into the show unless there is an incident up front as Bachelia is driving like a master wheel man right now. In the Molson Modified Heat, the pole sitter, who was Gatlin Downey in Heat number 1, got moved immediately out of the way and almost missed the show going to the LCQ. Kyle Bachelia trying to reverse that. Trying to lock himself in to the show immediately with a win here in heat number one as we got three laps to go as they come on around. And the fact that the top seven, you know, that's pretty good that seven cars are still in the fight really for this win. Not too far behind the race leader of Kyle Bachelia are these guys and they're still fighting for that final transfer spot between Bolton and Louvier right now. Chris Louvier in the double zero, his team a bit... Uh, of an issue it's the british team that was formerly known as adkins racing team was bought out turned into thunder thunderbird motorsports in that double zero but failed to pick up sponsorship for this season uh, but of course they are running the old martini scheme that they ran last year except martini did leave the team as austin johnson's gonna go for the race lead i think he had enough of just watching these rookies or these younger guys uh taking the fight to him he's gonna go right to the inside of Bichelia. Pushing up the track a little bit. Does Bichelli have anything for him in that 66 on the outside? And I don't think he will. He's going to be right on the quarter panel down the front straightaway. But Austin Johnson leads across the line. That's two laps to go here at Homestead. As Eves and Kingley are also back there trying to make it work. Now Eves going to get pushed up the track by Kingley. He's going to have to go help Bichelli through the corner. As Kingley fights for that fourth position. You got four cars under a blanket here with just two laps to go in the first heat of the day and now you see Louvier further back pulling away from Jeff Bolton looks like Bolton might have to race his way in through the last chance qualifier now is Austin Johnson working that inside line in the 51 we'll see his commit is going to throw it in right under Eves but Shelley is going to get cleared for the race lead by Austin Johnson Oliver Kingley's going at him for second but Austin Johnson now one lap away from winning heat number one and putting himself on the pole for the event and we'll see, maybe this event will be much slower now that the leech of Austin Johnson has pulled away as there are three wide for that second position. Commit goes up the track. Kingley's going to try to push Bichelia wide, and Bichelia is going to go from first to third in just a matter of corners. And if he does indeed finish third, he'd only start 11th in the race compared to first, which he could have just one lap prior. But coming through three and four, the king of Homestead, Austin Johnson in the Veterans Oil number 51 Pontiac. He's going to round out a turn number four. Kingley's going to clear uh, Bachelia for second. And Austin Johnson is going to take the pole of the Fields 100. Oliver Kingley, Kyle Bachelia, Matthew Eves, Ikna Commit. And Chris Louvier will be the six racing their way into the show. Jeff Bolton, Robert O'Reilly, Zachary Bilson, and Kyle Vodders will be the four having to race their way in through the last chance qualifier. But what a drive by Austin Johnson there in that 51 Veterans Oil Machine. Great drive there. Puts him into the race win. He worked on Bichelia all race long. Took him till lap nine to finally get by him and pulled away. So... Johnson starting on pole for the Fields 100, looking to get his third straight win at Homestead here in the Dr. Pepper Dash Series. We're going to go ahead and load up heat number two. Get you guys ready to go racing once again here at Homestead. Heat number two coming up shortly. We roll off ready for heat number two. Hayden Mears, the son of Casey Mears, on the front row on pole position alongside him. Ricky Freeman Jr. Uh, in the number nine for KCM Luke Evans leeching again in this 81 and Alex Fletcher after a wild flip in the in the Troyer 75 is back in his number 72 cool drive Pontiac he'll be driving the 72 starting fourth here 
Glenn Mixon in the 68 for Luke Evans Incorporated in fifth. Daniel Bouchard in the 16 sits sixth in seventh. <gasps> Colton Jacobs in the 76. Alongside him, Felix Jansen, who just barely missed his chance at the Troyer 75 in heat number four in that event. Lost out in the LCQ. And Kirsten Martinez, the new driver of the 94, Logan Cloud, sitting out the rest of Homestead. Green flag is in the air. Heat number two underway. Already Martinez knows how fast this 94 must be because he's going right to the inside. This driver had no practice or qualifying this entire weekend. He was just thrown in this car as a last-ditch effort, really, and now he's already putting it into the show as he passes Daniel Bouchard, ninth to sixth immediately. Now Freeman Jr. is going to look to the inside on Hayden Mears back there. Side by side for the race lead is now Alex Fletcher goes up the track further back and Freeman Jr. as Bouchard gets into the back of the 72, pushes him wide. You got the Luke Evans Incorporated drivers of Evans and Mixon fighting back there. Hayden Mears going to lead lap one in the 64. He was the last driver into the Troyer 75, finishing fifth in the LCQ, was second quickest in quality qualifying here in the DPDS so maybe stock cars will run a bit better than a uh, bit better for him he's out in front as here we go now that's for the transfer as Alex Fletcher is all the way up the track that's gonna bring Martinez into the show and now Colton Jacobs in the 76 fighting back there for fans of America racing and now Martinez all over the back of Luke Evans as Felix Jansen starting to drop back in that five Jansen and Evans both missed the Molson modified event the Troyer 75 uh, by not qualifying in through their races so these two both trying to change that here now Mears and Freeman Jr. pulling away. Luke Evans clear into third as the rest of the field battles. Now Martinez up to fourth. Mixon fifth. Bouchard sixth. And it's Jacobs, Fletcher, and G uh, Jansen out there at the back of this one as Mixon uh, is going to throw it in on that outside trying to get a big run off the corner as the 16 has Fletcher all over the back of him pushing for that transfer spot as that's where Bouchard is right now. Sixth position is where you got to be to make the field. Hayden Mears for Hagen Enterprises moving away. And second, Ricky Freeman Jr. Freeman in his, I believe this is his second year for uh, the number nine team of KCM. Um, right now sitting in that second position. Luke Evans back there in third and the 81 trying his best to drive around and drive away in this field. Uh, again, was just very slow the whole Molson Modified weekend. Did not make it really on pace. And right now third quickest in the stock cars. A lot of these guys are better in the stock cars than the Molson Modifieds. The Modifieds are just so much more different than anything else driven in the NSDCA. Can't really clang wheels too much, of course. They are an open wheel cars. Now M Martinez is going to drop back. That's going to bring Mixon in the 68 right on up and into the inside. And could get Colton Jacobs into the show in that 76. I believe the 76 car... Uh, did make the field last year. I believe it was with KT Larson, though. Uh, they bought out the ride, so uh, now they're trying to do it once again as we got a battle for the race lead heating up. Drag race down the front straightaway between Mears and Freeman Jr. It's going to be Mears leading that lap, but the outside, not the preferred line here. But we'll see as he throws it in. Now Freeman's going to throw it in. Almost some contact there. I think there might have been because Mears got a bit sideways. And that's going to give Ricky Freeman Jr. to the point. As now Mears is going to have to play catch up. He wants to start second in the field's 100. Daniel Bouchard cleared to third. Luke Evans incorporated Glenn Mixon versus team boss Luke Evans for uh, fourth and fifth. And back in sixth is the 76 of uh, Colton Jacobs as he clears him and now Martinez going right back at it on the 81. You got Fletcher and Jansen at the back as well. Those two really have not been competitive so far. They might be waiting for it. So we've got a drag race down the front straightaway as we cross the halfway point in this event. Mixon now to the inside of Bouchard. That's for the third position there uh, as uh, as the 68 of Mixon's going to clear Bouchard. Now Freeman Jr. very high. That's going to bring Hayden Mears possibly back into it. Or Freeman's just going to pull away even further with a big run down the back. Now Alex Fletcher for Cyclone, his own team, right to the inside of Kirsten Martinez. That's for the transfer spot. But right now, as you see, Luke Evans has fallen back. That is two of your leeches this weekend out of the event. Felix Jansen, I believe, might possibly be a Florida 5 competitor in that number 5. I think he has an MDCS ride. I don't know about Cup 
or Trux on the other hand. But Fletcher now on the inside of the 94, trying to make that move. Now Bouchard's going to just put himself in between the 76, throws the block on the 72 as Fletcher will now pick up that final transfer spot. Still a long way to go as they're starting to heat up up front. Freeman versus Hayden Mears as they've pulled away. They're pretty safe in the show right now, very far ahead. Uh, it's two seconds between them and sixth place. So right now they could probably start fighting for this race win. Uh, like you see there is Hayden Mears right up to the back of Freeman. Mixon's going to go wide. That's going to bring Jacobs in it. Fletcher now to the inside of Martinez. Luke Evans back there as well. So this battle's starting to heat up here for this transfer spot as Alex Fletcher now puts himself as the last driver in. Ever since Freeman got around Mears, he's he's really not pulled away. Mears has closed back in the gap, and now he's trying to get ever closer to that number nine. Ford versus Dodge up here. Hagen Enterprises is a dynasty, really, in these bottom tier series, the DPDS and Molson Modifieds. Uh, they've won two championships. Adam Mitchell won the DPDS title two years ago. Alex Parker won the Molson Modified title last season. But right now, Mears trying to continue that and possibly move to KGM in the future. Two laps to go as the top two have pulled away. Uh, Glenn Mixon trying to pull away as we got a big war now for the transfer spot. That's Kirsten Martinez ahead of now Evans, Fletcher, and Jansen. And two of these guys, Evans and Jansen, both did not make the Troyer 75. As Fletcher's going to use the outside on, on Martinez and clears. Now you got Jacobs and Bouchard just a little further up, starting to fight each other for that fifth spot. But it looks like Martinez really screwed up coming off of turn number two. It's going to hold up Evans and Jansen real far. Problem for Felix Jansen is so far in this event, he has not uh, even been inside the top six at any point. So th that car is just not handling well, and it does not look like he has the pace to do it. White flag is in the air. Is now Fletcher's going after Bouchard and Jacobs. Now Bouchard's going to throw the block on the 76 down into the corner, or on the 72 as he moves under the 76. Luke Evans might have just gave Felix Jansen a bump, but now the top three pretty spread out as, as Ricky Freeman Jr., completes his final lap here now up to a second and about a quarter ahead of Hayden Mears. It looks like Ricky Freeman Jr. in the Parker's Kitchen number nine is going to come through three and four right there. Up the track he goes as he's going to have a nice clean race win coming off the corner. It's going to be Ricky Freeman Jr. winning Hayden Mears in second. The rest of the field will fight to the line, but Ricky Freeman Jr. wins heat two. Hayden Mears in second, Mix in third, Bouchard, Jacobs, and Fletcher, your six, meaning Kirsten Martinez in his debut, his first time ever in a DPS car, only gets seventh. Luke Evans falls to eighth, and Felix Jansen ninth, so those two have to fight through another LCQ to try to make the field's 100. Ricky Freeman Jr. will start on the outside of row one here with Austin Johnson. So we'll see if Freeman can get up there and pass that 51 on the re on the start of the field's 100. Still a lot of racing left today, though. Freeman Jr. wins heat number two. Let's move on to heat three. Heat number three coming at you. Stephen Colin, who had a pretty good qualifying weekend as well as a race weekend so far, rolls off on pole uh, in that Pole position racing, number 46. Riley Wilkin was spun out early in the Troyer 75. He is in the 23 for Henson Racing. Thomas Cassidy with his debut for Gemini rolls off third. And Tony Wallens moved to Rockstar Energy Racing. He rolls off fourth. Ryan Butcher and the 83 of Tommy Hurdsand there. Two Toyotas, uh, fifth and sixth. In seventh is Anderson Reed, one of your Florida Five participants. In eighth is Benedict Mirdo the third, who won a heat uh, in the Molson Modifieds. And Nelson Reeves, the owner of that 46 team, rolls off the tail end of the field for Kyle Corbett Motorsports. Green flags in the air. Ten more laps ahead of us. Ten more laps of action at Homestead. Pretty orderly heading down into one. Riley Wilkin, though, going to be the one tearing up on the outside, and he's going to really overshoot the corner there in the 23, but it might get him a bite off of the corner if he can hang on against the 46 of Colin. Three wide for second now as he drops back just slightly, but here comes Thomas Cassidy now going to take it three wide for the race lead, getting real aggressive on the opening lap here in heat number three is now the 46 of Colin goes up the track. Here comes Tony Wallen up there. Cassidy real slow on the inside, just holding him up as Reed 
Reeves makes a move up the middle, and that's going to put him in the show already after one lap. These guys that start ninth usually have had issues in qualifying, whether it be a crash, an engine failure, a mechanical issue that didn't get you to start the race, and that's why you see some of these fast guys just tearing their way through the field immediately. But now, Stephen Colon in the 46 pulling away as that inside line just does not get anywhere. Colon's pulling away as Wallen and Cassidy have both held up the inside line very, very much. Butcher and Anderson Reed, two Florida Five participants, nose to tail back there trying to make this show as Tommy Herdsey and Benedict Mirror the third, two full time drivers already sitting outside of this event. Riley Wilkin clearing to second. Man, that inside line just does not get a bite off the corner. That 32's really been holding him up. Cassidy's holding him up. And now Stephen Colon is off to the races for that orange number 46. Pulling away uh, right ahead of now Riley Wilkin in second. Of course, R Wilkin, one of your Molson Modified Championship contenders from last season with Henson Racing, hoping that we'll have a better year in the 23 than Chris Stottlemyre had last season as well. Top two pulled away as Tony Wallen leads the rest of the charge down the back straightaway. Thomas Cassidy fourth, Butcher fifth, and there's Reeves sixth. So that's the battle right there. Reed, Butcher, Cassidy, Mirdo, and Reeves, as well as Tommy Herdsand further back there. As now Cassidy gets out as Herdsand really throwing it in. That car, I don't think it's handling too well, but he is doing everything he can to try to get that car going. As now Riley Wilkin has caught up to Stephen Cole, and here we go for the race lead down into turn number one. This could be the battle here. Four laps into this one as now Colin pulls away through the corner, but Wilkins going to be right there coming off the exit. Butcher and Reed working together. They've now pulled away as Reeves clear into six. There's Cassidy, Mirdo, and uh, Tommy Herdsand right there. Nose to tail behind Nelson Reeves. They're going to have to fight for these spots as we go around here at Homestead. It's been a pretty good uh, racing so far. No real incidents, just a bunch of hard-fought racing. As you see Mirdo all over the back of Thomas Cassidy, and just as we say that, there goes Benedict Mirdo in the 03 car. He goes sideways, is going to keep it off the wall, but that's going to give him a ticket to the LCQ as well as Tommy Herdsand. No cautions in the heats, so that will cost Tommy Herdsand everything, and it looked like he did not have a spoiler there, but the... Uh, Rear color that was just blending into the groove, but Benedict Mirdo the third, the 03 Aldi's car spins around on turn number two, and that will be the end of the day for him. Now you got Stephen Colon, Riley Wilkin, Tony Wallen, Ryan Butcher, Anderson Reed pretty much locked in. Nelson Reeves just has to worry about Thomas Cassidy now in that CSI number 12, just chasing him down. And all you got to do is beat one more car since Tommy uh, Tommy Herdsand for SBR and Benedict Mirdo the third for Team Mirdo. Both pretty much out of this one as Mirdo is going to have to fight that Aldi car back into the show. Bit of a commentator's curse there. Now Butcher works to the inside of uh, Tony Wallen. That's for third. Butcher starting to tear his way through. Almost did not make the show uh, in the Molson Modified Series. Was a last lap pass on Felix Jansen in heat number four to get him into the show. As Riley Wilkin is going to go after the 46 right now down this back straightaway. Here comes Wilkin in the 23. Now to the bottom. Going to try the slide job maybe here as he will slide up in front of the 46. Can Colin get a crossover? Wilkins going to cover it off, and Riley Wilkins going to take the race lead. But here comes the leeches, and Ryan Butcher, Anderson Reed charging now through the field, and Butcher up to third. These Toyotas trying to get that win here in the DPDS as Riley Wilkin is right now leading in a Toyota, but you got some Dodges Chevys up here. There's, there's Nelson Reeves now starting to pull away just uh, bit by bit from the Gemini Racing 12. The other two fighting at the back. So we got five cars under a blanket up front. Nelson Reeves looks like he could be solidly in the show back there in sixth. Just has to hang on over Cassidy as they go three wide for the second spot. The Wawa number one right to the inside as the 46 goes up the track. The orange number 46 now. Colin starting to fade quickly as he's gone from first to fifth in the last few laps. Three laps to go at Homestead. Wilkin, Butcher, Reed, your top three. Rest of the field fighting back there. Now it looks like Colin's going to have to hang on over Nelson Reeves, which could be big. If those two start battling, that could give Thomas Cassidy enough to catch on up. But Riley Wilkin now going to try to win this over some hard-charging Anderson Reed and Ryan Butcher drivers back there in second and third. Both of them driving for their own team. Wilkin driving for Henson Racing, the team that got him the start in the NSDCA. 
Looking further back now, Reeves going after Stephen Colon. That is the team owner against the driver, but now Tony Wallen, that inside line, I don't know if it's the 32 and 12 setup or what, but they just park the bus coming out of two and four on that inside. And now Wallen lets the 46 pull away. And Wallen looking at, I believe that was his car. No, I don't think Wallen was for KCM last year. Um, but that is his t that is his car number in the Molson Modifieds. He's for KCM in the Molson Modifieds in the number 99. Riley Wilkin out in front now chase being chased by Anderson Reed. One lap to go next time by, and we'll see if the 23 team can pick up where they left off last year in the MMS with a race win here in heat number three as they come on around. Ryan Butcher back there in third. Uh, the 46 of Stephen Cullen in fourth. Nelson Reeves fifth and sixth. Tony Wallen, that's your transfer right now. As here comes Thomas Cassidy getting a big run. Coming after Tony Wallen. White flag is in the air. This is the battle for the transfer spot. And here comes Cassidy now looking to the inside. Not going to happen. As Riley Wilkin continues to lead this race. Herdsan and Mirdo definitely out of this one. Cassidy versus Wallen and possibly Reeves is for the final transfer spot. But Riley Wilkins pulled away. And it looks like this is going to be his race uh, win here in heat number three. Going to start third in the field's 100 as he pulls on away. That's how it is going to be. So coming through three and four, putting the pedal back down onto uh, the metal. Number 23 of Riley Wilkin brings it out of turn number four. He will win heat number three. Anderson Reed, Ryan Butcher, Stephen Colin, Nelson Reeves, and Tony Wallen will all be in the show. And it will be Thomas Cassidy, Tommy Herdsan, and Benedict Mirdo III, the three drivers racing their way in through the LCQ. So Mirdo had a great uh, modified time, but he will have to go to the LCQ here in the DPDS. Riley Wilkin and Henson Racing pick up the uh, Heat 3 win over Anderson Reed, Ryan Butcher, who charged their way through the field. An exciting Heat 3 with our first incident of the day between Wilkin, uh, between Mirdo and others. We'll have to see what Heat number 4 will bring in just a few minutes. Field rolls off for heat number four. Toyota Racing Development with the new Toyota Camry and the DPDS has finally made its start. It's Colin Teague in the number 97 with a great weekend he's had. Cody go fourth and second for Ford Performance Racing. Then Santiago Gutierrez, Rose Henson, Mathis Wells, Adam Mitchell, uh, the six of DJ Reed who missed the Troyer 75, KT Larson in the 777, and Zayden Davidson in a backup car after trashing the car and qualifying just like two years ago. Team boss Daniel Cobza did the same thing. Davidson starts this race from ninth. Green flag's in the air. We got another 10 laps for heat number four. Green flag, and we're racing. Already Gutierrez was all over the back of the 97, but go forth with a great start to the race. Is going to jump himself into the race lead. Henson goes wide. Adam Mitchell goes wide. Now KT Larson forcing her way up the middle. Now Mitchell and Henson are going to make some contact off the corner. They're both out of it. KT Larson from 8th now to 4th, maybe 3rd if she can outbreak Wells and Gutierrez into the corner. Not going to happen, but she is up to 4th in that 777. And the good thing about the DPDS, there's not uh, major scheme rules, so uh, different sides of the car as you see on the 77, uh, 777, the uh, purple and green sides. There's no rules against that, the DPDS, so bit of a special scheme out here, especially with the th triple numbers. That's also allowed only in the DPDS and Molson Modifieds. Now T gets the push up into second as Cody Goforth attempts to pull away in that 74. His leech races and these uh, events haven't gone well. He has one career win in the NSDCA coming back in the RBSTS, uh, the precursor to the Dr. Pepper Dash series with the one win at Memphis. And that was for Ford Performance Racing, which he now owns a part of. KT Larson, though, getting that 777 up for third against Mathis Wells. DJ Reed wants to race his way into the show in that HBP number six, the great railing floppa number six. Side by side now for fourth. He did not make it in in the Molson Modifieds. He DNQ'd in the LCQ. I think he was the first or second car out. His contact back there as Henson throws Gutierrez into the wall and they both make contact. Now Henson's in the wall. Larson fighting the HBP number six of Reed. Uh, Mitchell's going to sneak by to the bottom. And now Wells, the last car in with Davidson right behind, but two cars damaged up as they push way too hard. Rose Henson in the 86 and the 01 of Santiago Gutierrez, both, uh, well, at least the 
Uh, oh, one had a pretty decent qualifying time. He and the 86 started in row number two. They are both now currently out of the show as Mathis Wells goes after KT Larson side by side. That's for the fifth position as Davidson currently sits as the only driver in this top group now out of the uh, Fields 100 at this point, but he still has a lot of time to make it up. The 93 has been a pretty good car. It's a pretty good scheme. Hot Wheels coming along uh, with Daniel Cobbs in a lot of things this season. Uh, full, was full-time with the Mountain Dew Custom Series car last year for Cobbs, and now it's sponsoring his DPDS team as well in the Truck Series as he moves up there. That's going to be Davidson sliding past KT Larson. And last year it was, I believe, Larson who drove the 93 and missed the show last year. So now she's seeing the same thing Zayden Davidson did. I'm pretty sure she got the ride bought. Uh, she bought into the ride for the 76 car. I'm pretty sure that was the uh, storyline last year and how that went. Uh, so Larson in the 777 now fighting with her old car uh, in that 93 last year. Side by side now that's going to be for that sixth and final transfer spot. Uh, with that Larson storyline again, I'm not, I know it was with KRV and Fans of America Racing. I'm not sure in what uh, direction the ride was bought, but... Uh, for sure, this was the same position KT was in last season. I uh, had to, I believe, had to buy her way into the show um, in that team. So now, all over the back of Zayden Davidson's f fighting for that sixth spot. Davidson in that backup car does not want to tear up another one because if you if you do not finish the race, you don't get to race in the LCQ. There's no backups this year uh, in the in the DPDS. So you got to try to keep it clean, and that's why we're seeing. Maybe not a bit more clean racing. We've seen more clean racing or less big crashes than we have in previous years. As Davidson just gets the entire track used up by KT Larson. Nothing he could do there. As Henson's going to come back into this as well in in the 86 car. So now uh, she's back there in that seventh position. Or trying at least for the seventh position against Davidson. As both of those sit out behind KT Larson. Mathis Wells, DJ Reed fighting for that fifth or fourth position. Cody Goforth continues to lead uh, in second, Colin Teague. And in third, Adam Mitchell, a strong driver, a DPDS champion of two years ago, finally getting the call up to the Mountain Dew Custom Series uh, this season for Shade Burkhardt Racing. So that's why he's in this number 47 for SBR in that Toyota. Now Larson all over the back of DJ Reed. Reed does not want to miss out on another of the races because he might not make it in, in through the uh, LCQ. Reed is not an oval racer. Neither really is KT, but she's going to look to the inside now for that fifth spot in the Marvel Lucha Libre edition number 777. As he's, she's going to take that final spot or move up one from that final spot as DJ Reed now sits in the final spot. Zayden Davidson back there. Gutierrez and Rose, they have damage, but they're catching up quickly because these guys have been battling for so long. And now Davidson, the first Chinese or the second, I believe, Chinese driver in the NSDCA, I believe following Jonathan Wong, uh, here making his debut to the Dr. Pepper Dash series, hopefully this weekend for the Fields 100. Up front, though, we got a battle of the factory teams. Ford Performance Racing for versus Toyota Racing Development for that race lead as Colin Teague's going at it with Cody Goforth. Coming around to two laps to go this time by Mitchell back there in third, the 47. Mathis Wells fourth in the 62. Side by side now as DJ Reed's going to slide to the inside of KT Larson. It does a big slide job there. That's for that fifth spot. What a move by DJ to get himself up there. So two laps to go. We'll see if HBP can make the show. They missed Logan Cloud in the in the Molson Modified series. So we'll see if HBP can get into the show here with DJ Reed. Out in front is the 74. Cody Goforth trying to hang on over two hard-charging Toyotas of Colin Teague and Adam Mitchell. Mathis Wells looks like he is clear into fourth as Adam Mitchell's now going to look for second in that 47. 47 car. I believe this is the third year Hungry Jack has come to sponsor the 47. Uh, it's either the second or third year. I know uh, last year it was Irving Allison in the 47 car then. Uh, and Irving, I think this is his first year. He's not participating in the Fields 100. He drove the number 11 a while ago as well as we get the white flag. And it looks like this is all Cody Goforth's race. Got the race lead on that opening restart or opening start of the race. And now it looks like he's pulling on away. The battle for the transfer spot still heating up. And, and there goes Davidson. He's going to throw it away right there. Just drove it way too hard into the corner. And I think that's going to be all they wrote. As Adam Mitchell pushes Teague down the back straightaway. We'll see if he makes the move for second or not. And he's going to get a bumper down there real close. Might have gotten a piece of the 97 and pushed him up. But Cody Goforth for Ford Performance Racing in the number 74 is going to bring his Ford Taurus out of turn number four down the front straightaway. Heat number four goes 
to Cody Goforth in FPR. It looks like Teague just edges out uh, Adam Mitchell for second, Mitchell third, Wells fourth. DJ Reed will bring HBP into the show in fifth, and KT Larson will be the final driver in the 777 in the show, meaning Zayden Davidson, Rose Henson, and Santiago Gutierrez will be the three fighting their way in after Rose and Gutierrez tangled down there in turn number one a little bit ago. They're going to have to bump out the sides of that car and hope they are ready for the LCQ. But Zayden Davidson does not get the backup into the show. He'll have to fight his way through the LCQ as well. But Cody Goforth wins heat number four. One more heat to go and an LCQ remain to find our 35 drivers for the Fields 100. Let's go ahead and get you to heat number five. Final heat of the day, heat number five. It's Devin Fair for Mac Johnson Motorsports on the front row with Richard Herman, who moves over to Gemini's number 10. Larry Hagan for, for Coors Light Racing in third with Gatlin Downey in fourth. In fifth this year in the 61 is Alex Parker, your defending Molson Modified Champion. Almost won the title last year as well. Alongside him is Will Parrish in the Evernham 79, which won the title last year with Daniel Elliott. Lotus Disparito competing in the Florida 5 is seventh. In eighth is Roberto Crown Jr., the new driver for the 89, and Diego Yepes, who failed to get a time in because the car did not start in qualifying. They had to change out everything in it. Diego's going to have to start from the rear to make it in. Green flags in the air. Ten more laps with this final heat of the day. This burrito's a teammate to Parker. Already gets to the inside there as they go side by side. Three wide coming through turn number one. Roberto Crown Jr. is going to go right up and into the 79 of Will Parrish immediately as they come around. Now Hagen in the 28 looking to the inside of uh, Devin Fair for the race lead as Disparito all over the back of that 28, pushing him into the corner real close between them, but it's going to get Hagen into the race lead in that number 28 orbit dodge. He's going to take the lead away. Is some big contact there. Yepes from ninth to fourth coming off the corner in lap on lap one. Here comes the 34 now. He's solidly in the show as they run as Alex Parker, the defending Molson Modified Champion, looks for a, ch a chance to get to the inside of that number 34. Burrito and Hagen fighting and now pulling away from the field. Coors Light Racing uh, owns that number 28 for this weekend. Hagen Enterprises, his driver, Larry Hagen's driver, right behind him in Lotus Disparito and Alex Parker further back in that 61. Currently, Gatlin Downey, who was in the same situation as he was in heat number one, already out of the show back in seventh, has to race his way back up in there. He might have to go to the LCQ for two times this weekend, but he did really do good uh, in the Molson Modified LCQ, got him into the show. Alex Parker looking to the inside of Yepes. This could be three wide for the final three spots here. So he's all over the back of that 34, real close to getting into the back of him. Yepes gets that car a bit unsettled. He's going to walk it up the track. Is now down. He's going after her. You got the 89 of Crown on the inside now as that's going to be real close between them. Gatlin Downey and Crown are going to make contact just slightly sideways coming off the corner. But he's going to save it and gather it back up. He's going to lose a spot to the 79 though. And that's going to put him even further out of the show than he was. Back up front, Larry Hagan pulling away in the 28. Devin Fair looking to the inside of Disparito for second. Not going to happen there as Alex Parker in the 61 moves into fourth. Yepes fifth as they go down the front straightaway single file. Everyone taking care of themselves so far except the battle for the final transfer. Roberto Crowns drop back a little bit as Richard Herman, uh, the 79 of Will Parrish, Gatlin Downey go at it for that one final spot into the show. Downey now trying to work that outside line. 79 of Will Parrish, a brand new rookie to the NSDCA, made a few late model starts over the offseason, uh, but that's about it. So he's carrying the torch for a big team, Evernham Motorsports, or Evernham Racing in the 79, coming off of their championship run last year with Daniel Elliott, who has since retired from the NSDCA. Coming on around, Yepes all over the back of Parker again. These are two champions of the NSDCA in very different disciplines as Yepes is a Crown Royal Truck Series champion uh, from about, I believe, three years ago as he's all over the back of Parker. Going to let him go into the corner, though, and it looks like the whole field going to take care of themselves single file as they work through halfway through this one. Don't got to get too aggressive. You don't want to crash yourselves out. You saw in the last two heats, the last two heats had two incidents, uh, in one in each heat, that took their drivers both out of contention for the fields 100 at least racing through the heats had to go to the lcq so 
you don't want to get too aggressive, plus you don't want to piss anyone off. As you see, Herman's going to get real close and sideways as he just touches the 34 back there in the fight for fifth. Uh, but you don't want to crash yourself out and then have to go to the LCQ. Starting at the rear, you might not make it in, especially uh, since there's going to be, what, 13 cars in that final uh, heat? Just about 13, uh, 13 or 17 cars or 16 cars, something like that. A lot of cars in that final heat that you're going to have to race your way on through. And only five in the LCQ make it in in the biggest field we'll have of the day. Richard Herman's uh, just sitting in sixth, trying everything he can to hold off Gatlin Downey. Yepes not out of the woods either for such a, a decorated driver in the number 34. Has a ton of wins in the NSDCA, one of the best of all time. And he's really fighting hard with Devin Fair and Alex Parker back here and Richard Herman. It just shows the, DP, the DPDS series. Uh, and Homestead, a great equalizer, seeing these spec cars uh, out here. Really no upgrades allowed uh, in this outside of the setups you bring to the track. And that's going to be big for Yepes as it looks like he might lose. He's now in the final spot. Now as Downey jumps to his inside, this could be between the two leeches as Downey's pushing Richard Herman down the back straightaway. Three laps to go and the fight for the final transfer spot into the main is on. Top three have pulled away. Uh, Larry Hagan looking to win this race comfortably as Disparito and Fair fight. Now they're three wide for that final two spots in the show. Downey's going to use up the whole track as he pushes the 10 up the track coming off the corner. Three wide for the final spot across the line. Downey, Herman, and Yepes for fifth, sixth, and seventh. And Yepes is going to get sent wide. He might have to go to the last chance qualifier to race this 34 car in. Will, that'll be a big story to see, especially if he ends up finishing ninth in this. He'd have to start dead last in the LCQ. But he's seventh right now. He's been outpacing the 79 and 89 this whole race. But he still has a lot of time to go. Still two more laps to go. A lot can happen in two laps here at Homestead. Looking back up front, Larry Hagan off to the races in the 28. He's going to bring this one home in the bag, just like Peter Onjak yesterday, uh, or two days ago in the heats and in the race yesterday. Lotus Disparito second. Looks like she's going to lock herself in in that 60. Uh, Devin Fair easily going to get his way in. He's in third. But the battle's back here. Alex Parker, Gatlin Downey, Richard Herman, Diego Yepes. Three of those guys will advance. One will have to go to the last chance qualifier. And it looks right now it could be Yepes, but he just has to get around Richard Herman for Gemini Racing. Downey now racing his way in. We're coming to the white flag this time by four cars under a blanket. Down into turn number three. Downey working on the inside of Parker. We're going to see if he can make that pass stick for the fourth position. Herman all over the back of him wants him to go. He parked the bus coming out of turn number four. It's going to slow down that inside line. And now Yepes is all over the back of Herman, pushing him down into the corner. Now we'll see if Yepes will be able to make a move to the bottom. But Downey pushes him out of the way as the 10 goes very wide. That could be the move that gets Yepes into the show. Don't count out the 79 of Will Parrish right back there in the, in, in the eighth position. And Roberto Crown still there, but side by side for this spot. The final spot in the race coming down into turn number three. This breaking zone could be the factor on who makes the field's 100 and who goes to the last chance qualifier. Now Herman up the track. Downey real slow coming off the corner. It's going to be a drag race coming to the line. Hagen's going to win it easily. Devin Fair, Disparito fight side by side and come into the line. Yepes will miss the field's 100 and have to go to the last chance qualifier as Downey and Herman just beat him to the line, blocking basically the whole track. And it's going to be Diego Yepes, Will Parrish, and Roberto Crown Jr. heading to the last chance qualifier for their final attempt at making the show. Gatlin Downey, Richard Herman, Alex Parker. Lotus Disparito, Devin Fair, and it's won by Larry Hagan. Those six will be in the field's 100 there. So Hagan will start that race from the fifth position. Got a lot of leeches up front that could make for an exciting race coming in to this weekend. So Larry Hagan wins heat number five. We have our 30 cars. 30 out of the 35 are set for the field's 100. We have one last event to go. The last chance qualifier for all of these drivers uh, they still have a lot of time to make up 20 laps with cautions in the last chance qualifier. That'll be coming up in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. We'll bring you guys back to the action here at Homestead just after this. Sixteen drivers missed the show so far. Five spots remain in the last chance qualifier here at Homestead. 
We got 16 drivers for those five spots, 20 laps ahead of us, this time with cautions. Jeff Bolton and Kirsten Martinez on row one with Thomas, Kurt, uh, Thomas Cassidy and Zayden Davidson, row two. Row three, the King, Diego Yepes and Robert O'Reilly. Luke Evans and Tommy Hertzsey in row four. Rose Henson and Will Parrish, row number five. Zachary Bilson, Felix Yance in row six. Benedict Mirdo, the third, and Santiago Gutierrez, row seven. And it's Roberto Crown Jr. and Kyle Vodders in row eight. 16 drivers, five spots. The top five advance after 20 laps. Green flags in the air. The last chance qualifier to make the Fields 100 is green. Pretty orderly down into turn one. Hertzsand gets down to the inside line pretty quickly. And the inside's really where you want to be on this, at least this opening lap. Uh, after that, you could go and do more as Yepes now all over the back of Cassidy. Uh, Yepes, basically the strongest driver in this field. If he does not make it through this event, that is going to be an upset as he's going to already throw it three wide. Looks like he's doing what the other leeches did. Get to the front quick. You could pull away from the field and they can fight amongst themselves as Tommy Hurtsian slides up the track now. Three wide back there. You got Henson in the 86, Luke Evans in the 81. Two other leeches in the field trying to race their way in as we are three wide. Not even even for a transfer spot, this is for the sixth position as the top five start to pull away. Evans into the corner, going to have to try to do this. Evans and Jansen could miss both Homestead races if they fail to race their way in this time. Cars up the track, couple cars in it, will perish real close and made contact with Tommy Herdsand back there. Bolton leads, Yepes second, Martinez third, Cassidy fourth, and Zayden Davidson currently holds the last position in the field as Luke Evans is going to run right up to the back of him. Three wide and even four wide back here as everyone's trying to race their way through and get up there in a hurry before this field starts spreading out because if you have 20 green flag laps here, you are going to lose touch of the race leaders in a hurry. Now, if there's cautions in the lake, if these guys start getting aggressive at the back, start making contact, that could drop down the laps and you'll have more time to get those moves done as Yepes all over the back of Jeff Bolton. Bolton trying to hang on. He is a uh, driver from the Red Bull Short Track Showdown days. Drove the 36 for OTC Racing. This is his first time, I believe, in a DPDS car, as though, though as Yepes throws it to the bottom in the Vice Star Chevy, and he's going to take that race lead away as Bolton goes way wide, and I think that's going to be all they wrote for Yepes. If he can get out in front at a speedway, he's going to be gone. Back in third is Cassidy hanging on. Look at the fighting back there. Three wide. That is for the 11th through 13th positions that don't matter. You don't get points for finishing higher in the LCQ, and you don't get into the show for finishing 11th, but they're all racing hard trying to get towards that front position now. Evans and Henson pulling on up as Bolton's going to get a run off the outside, trying to hang on as they're three wide for second. Yepes pulls away, and these guys are fighting for higher spots in this race. If you win the LCQ, you start 31st in the race. Probably not going to win the Fields 100, but it is a major achievement for many drivers just to make the biggest race of the season. Plus, if you miss this, it might just take your championship hopes and throw them down the drain. Henson and Evans right now leading that charge of the uh, eliminated drivers right now. Benedict Mirdo bringing that 03 back up. Don't know if these two are going to have any bloodlust after that event as Gutierrez shoved wide by Ro uh, Roberto Crown Jr. And it, it was not the 03 that actually was in that. It was the uh, 03 and I forget who the other one was that... Uh, Turned with Benedict Mirdo, but here we go now diving down into turn number three is Davidson all over the back of Bolton Cassidy there as well as they push through the corner and Jeff Bolton in the 39 now looking for that third position away from Thomas Cassidy Top two pulling away yep as getting out to a nice lead but Kirsten Martinez again now This is only his second time. He's been in a, in this 94 uh, at all in his life and he's right now running second in the LCQ trying to race his way in for CFRO. Jeff Bolton back in third, Zayden Davids in fourth, and Thomas Cassidy now sits as the last car in as Rose Henson in the 86. She's trying to race her way in in the Sega 86 for Henson Racing back there. Benedict Mirdo the third. He does not want to miss uh, either event this weekend. He made the Troyer 75, ran well in it. He's right now out of this one back in that seventh position. Will Parrish in 8th, Zachary Bilson 9th, Luke Evans 10th, Roberto, uh, Robert O'Reilly in 11th. It looks like this pack of drivers are really slower at the back. That's Santiago Gutierrez, Kyle Vaughters, uh, Roberto Crown Jr., Felix Jansen, who could miss both events this weekend and start his season off very poorly. 
And it looks like Tommy Herdsand in that SBR 83 really struggling today. Uh, not having a car to compete with the front guys. He's 16th and dead last so far after seven laps. Yepes down the back. Just nothing to do with this race leader. He is gone. Checked out from the pack as he is away from the battle for that final transfer spot. It is the 39 of Bolton ahead of Zayden Davidson, ahead of Thomas Cassidy. Henson fighting back there. Will Parrish getting in there as Luke Evans really sends it in near the back of Zachary Bilson. Across the line, eight laps through this one. Eight laps completed. Uh, still 12 laps to go in this event to decide who the final five in the field's 100 will be this weekend. But Martinez up the track in second. The rest of the field fighting pretty hard. Uh, for other positions, but at the back, a couple cars starting to drop off the back. That's Crown and Jansen really starting to fade. It looks like those cars will not be in the show, and that'll be the second year in the row. Shepard Racing misses the field's 100. Luke Evans missed the field uh, last year with that, and he is also missing the field right now in the 81, so both Evans and Jansen could miss both Homestead events this year uh, if they do not do something to pick up the pace. But really looks like the top two are going to be locked in. Yepes and Martinez have checked out from the field by at least about half a second apiece. So they are on their way to punching their ticket to the field's 100, the biggest race of the uh, Dr. Pepper Dash series season. Henson, though, getting a bit of a run off the corner on Cassidy. This could be the move for that final spot as he's going to get right up, or she's going to get right up to the back of the 12. Davidson looking to the inside of Bolton. Bolton was your pole sitter for this event. He's starting to slowly drop through the field as Henson shoves the 12 through the corner, and that's going to be the battle for the final spot. Uh, Will Parrish in the 79, going to make a move there, pushes the 86 up, and we're going to be side-by-side -side coming off the corner for that fifth and final position. Looks like Cassidy, though, is going to take the momentum on the outside line, and now Parrish is going to have to look away, uh, look for a way around the 86 of Rose Henson. Might have gotten a piece of that back bumper there as, set, as Henson sends it in almost into the back of Cassidy, and now we got five cars in a line with two of them fighting uh, to stay alive in this Fields 100 fight. Felix Jansen starting to drop off the back as well. Looks like that uh, kicking asphalt racing number five will not be able to make the show. Benedict Mirdo the third and the 03, the German born driver in the Aldi, uh, of course, a German chain sponsoring him. He is now moving his way into the seventh spot. Zachary Bilson back there in the seven, trying to make his first race since leaving after he won a race at Sonoma in the Red Bull Short Track Showdown Series three years ago. Uh, he's back in the fight in that number seven, trying to race his way into the show as well. As you see uh, even further back, uh, Robert O'Reilly in the 92, Santiago Gutierrez trying to get into this fight as well as Henson all over the back of the 93. That could be some contact almost there, and there's going to be some contact as she's going to turn the 93 around for that final spot, and the 93 goes for a spin down the back, and I think that's going to be the end of Davidson's day. Caution is out. That's going to erase Yepes and Martinez's race lead as Henson dumps the 93 for the final spot in the field. And we're not even ha we're just over halfway as Mirdo's trying to get a run back to the line. They race back to the line, and Henson will take that fifth position. But Zayden Davidson was solidly in the show, fighting for the final spot. And the Hot Wheels number 93 is going to go for a loop down the back straightaway, and most likely will eliminate him from the Fields 100 competition. As Rose Henson gets into the back and spins him, coming off a of turn number two. That's going to bring a lot more drivers back into the fight. Uh, Jansen, Herdsand, Crown, they'll have a shot at it. Uh, but with the laps starting to tick away here at Homestead, looks like uh, Yepes and uh, Kirsten Martinez will have their lead erased. And now they have to fight once again to try to make the show. Caution's out here at Homestead for the last chance qualifier. We'll get a quick replay on your screen, get you guys back for the restart and the final laps in the LCQ. First incident of the LCQ, Rose Henson going to be right on the back of Zayden Davidson coming off the corner. It's just going to turn him. I mean, you had that time to get off the throttle. Didn't get off the throttle. 93 goes around. We're under caution the first time today in the LCQ. Back live here at the Fields 100 Last Chance Qualifier. Top five make it into the show. We're going back racing with just about seven laps to go. Currently, it is Diego Yepes, uh, Kirsten Martinez, Thomas Cassidy, Jeff Bolton and Rose Henson in the field after Rose just turned the 93 in front of the field. 
Uh, though no one ended up hitting Davidson, just a simple 360. Benedict Mirdo the third is the first driver out of the show right now. This should be an aggressive restart for him, as well as Will Parrish, Zachary Bilson, Santiago Gutierrez, and Robert uh, and Robert O'Reilly. Kyle Vodders, Luke Evans, Felix Janssen, Tommy Herdsand, Roberto Crown Jr., and the 93 of Zayden Davidson pretty far behind. They're going to have to get a good restart and a good handful of these remaining laps to try to make it in. No green-white checkers for the LCQ, so it's 20 laps, give or take, if there's a caution or not. Coming down the front straightaway, Yepes looking to win this and, put his, and punch his ticket to the field's 100. Green flags back in the air, racing once again at Homestead. Bolton's already going to make the early move, but we said this would be an aggressive restart for Mirdo. He and Parrish both going to team up and pass Rose Henson right there as Mirdo is going to put that car into the show as they run. Now you got Gutierrez against Bilson and O'Reilly further back. Henson's going to go up the track, and that's going to put Benedict Mirdo III in the 3 into the show as they come down the back straightaway. Six laps to go next time by here at Homestead. We'll see if he can hang on for these next six laps, but he's been moving through the field pretty quickly. Thomas Cassidy now, the next driver in line for Mirdo to pass as Parrish is going at it against Rose for that sixth position. Top two pulling away. That's Yepes and Martinez already pulling away and making a gap. Bolton in third hanging just ahead of this battle for fourth between Mirdo and Cassidy. And it's Parrish, Henson, and Gutierrez right behind. But Henson's going to throw it in on the outside. We'll see if she can get that run coming off the corner as Mirdo throws it up and pushes Cassidy up and out of the track. Now Henson going to get the run off the corner. Where does she take the momentum? Right behind both of them. Can't really go anywhere without forcing a three wide. And I think if you just spun out the 93, you don't want to do any more aggressive moves uh, to piss off any of your other competitors. But now Mirdo in the 03 is going to take that inside line clear into fourth. Puts Cassidy in the final transfer spot as now Will Parrish and Henson are going to attack him for it. And Mirdo right up to third. What a monstrous restart this has been from seventh on the restart to third is Jeff Bolton's car is going to blow up in the middle of the field. And for the final transfer spot, Bolton will not make the show. Henson is on the apron. Cassidy's on the apron. And that is for the final spot right there is Gutierrez is going to take the spot away from Cassidy. And Jeff Bolton, his car blowing up and will come to a stop down in turn number two. And that'll be the end of the day for him as now Yepes pulls away. Uh, from Martinez, Mirdo in third, Parrish fourth, and Gutierrez now has to fight off Rose Henson, Thomas uh, Thomas Cassidy, Roberto, uh, Robert O'Reilly, Zachary Bilson, and now Felix Jansen. Where did he come from in the five? Could have a shot at making the show, but I don't think it's going to happen as he's now three wide down here for that ninth position. Contact between the 92 and seven. They're really pushing on each other, heading down the front straightaway, but now Gutierrez trying to pull away in that fifth position from the 86 of Rose Henson. There you see Bolton pulling it down pit road. Heartbreaking to see for that 39 team. Just blows up coming down the front straightaway. And now Mirdo's looking for second. He's trying to pick up as many spots as he can so he doesn't have to pass them in the Fields 100. But this 03, an absolutely uh, rocket of a restart. And he's already up to second. Could he chase down Yepes and win this race? I don't think so. Uh, but this 03 car is pretty fast right now. And he is moving through the field, setting down some of the fastest laps of the race so far. Catching up to Yepes, 1.3 seconds, three laps left. He could gain it uh, if he has a monster next couple laps. Gutierrez in fifth, slowly over Henson. Cassidy was in this race the entire time until the 39 blew up. Now he's back there fighting. Davidson is trying to get himself in as now Bilson and Jansen are going to make some contact and onto the apron now as they fight each other just outside uh, in that ninth and, or eighth and ninth position. Luke Evans at the tail end of the pack. He's not going to make the show, so he will miss both events this weekend. Felix Jansen as well as Gutierrez up the track. That's going to bring Henson back into the fight. Drag race for that final spot. Not going to happen as Henson has a pretty poor exit, but two laps to go. She is there chasing down the 0-1. The rest of the top four looks like they're going to have an easy time racing it in, uh, barring no mechanical failure. Yepes now pulling away from Mirdo, and Mirdo... Uh, Mirdo... Martinez and Parrish, those three are pulled away. And now it's just Gutierrez against Henson, and we'll have to see if Henson will pass him cleanly or spin another one for this final spot. Thomas uh, Thomas Cassidy in the 12th and 7th trying to trying any line he can to get up there. And Zayden Davidson's in 8th. If these top three get into an incident and possibly spin each other out, Davidson could be back in the show. But they're going to be real slow. Gutierrez real slow through the corner. 
Herdsan and Jansen almost make contact. That's going to bring Cassidy into the fight. White flag is in the air. One more lap to see if you will make the field's 100 field here at Homestead. And Henson goes up the track as Cassidy gets to the inside. Gutierrez trying to hang on. Davidson now coming right to the back of the 86. Just a couple laps ago, the 86 sent her for a spin. Sent him for a spin. We'll see what happens there as they drag race for that sixth position. But it's not going to matter if they can't get around the 01. Fifth is all you need to do to get into the show, the Fields 100. Contact between Parrish and Mirdo for that f uh, third position. It's not going to matter. Yepes is going to come out of turn number four and win the LCQ. Joining him will be uh, Kirsten Martinez, Will Parrish, Benedict Mirdo, and Santiago Gutierrez will be the final driver in in the dramatic final few laps of this LCQ. Rose Henson will come up one position short. Thomas Cassidy was up there the whole time, loses out, finishes seventh. Zayden Davidson put on a drive at the end. A couple more laps, he might have came back, finished eighth. Felix Jansen put on a valiant effort with Tommy Herdsand. They both moved through the field to ninth and tenth. Roberto Crown, Zachary Bilson, Robert O'Reilly, Luke Evans, Kyle Vodders, and uh, the one driver out of this one, Jeff Bolton, all will miss the show. So Diego Yepes, uh, Kier Kirsten Martinez will perish. Benedict Mirdo and the 01 of Gutierrez will round out your 30 car field for the Fields 100. An exciting group of races here. Six races today. We have the Fields 100 set for you tomorrow. Hope that you will be there to view that as well after a great batch of heat races. Some controversy there. Henson and, G Henson and uh, the 93 of Davidson probably going to park next to each other and have some words after that, basically taking the 93 out of the Fields 100. We got a lot of storylines coming out of this one. A lot of racing left to go as this Speed Weeks continues on. We thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you around at the Mountain Dew Custom Series, Ground Rail Truck Series, Sundrop Cup Series, and of course, the Fields 100 that will come at you tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time on the NSDCA.